comes from Jeremiah, the book, and this is from the second chapter. My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Jake, that's a, that's a good looking guitar. I can't even see it. It's in the case, but it looks pretty good. What kind of guitar you got there? Uh, Sears and Rogan. Really? Is it, is it a six string? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, let's take a look at it. Oh, man, look at that. Oh, yeah, six strings. Oh, man, I love it. Would you like to trade? Well, Tim, you have a Taylor. <laughs> I know. It's, it's 12 string. I'm tired of it. I, 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 don't, I don't want it anymore. But I, I, I'd love to trade. Would you be interested? Well, I can't give you any money for it. Well, that's all right. We'll just trade even. Listen to that. Isn't that great? But Tim, this is a Taylor. I know that everybody says it's the best guitar ever made, but, but I, I just, I don't want it anymore. I want this one. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, let's do it. Help yourself. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jake. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You are a good man. That's a good trade, wasn't it? Who said no? <laughs> Choir, that was a good trade, wasn't it? <laughs> How many of you think that was a good deal? <laughs> for Jake, well, but look what I got in such a nice case. Let me read to you something that was written by a fella. He says, the children of Israel acted against common sense. Why would they take something of great value and deliberately exchange it for something worthless? It defies every law of common sense, so much so that the astonishment can only be felt in heaven because the earth has lost its mind. Have you ever taken for granted something of great value in your life? Have you ever set aside something that mattered only to replace it with something that probably didn't matter nearly as much? God's people in this chapter of the story, Israel has already been carried away into captivity. The northern ten tribes, they've already been carried away and destroyed. And now only remains is the southern kingdom, Judah. Jeremiah, the prophet, who spoke those words that Troy read today, reminded them of the two great sins they had committed. They have left their God. He likened it to living waters. They've left their God and they've dug cisterns that are cracked and worthless and won't even hold water. Why is it that in this world... Human beings are prone sometimes to lay aside those things that matter deeply in exchange for things that are only temporary, temporary and, and not lasting. Why is it that people forget that the God of our creation, the God of our salvation, has called us all into relationship with Him? And anything we do or anything we say that contradicts or draws us away from that relationship with our God is a, 
is, a, is a, just a, a horrible, tragic mistake. I remember uh, on the weekend that Reva and I met, we were uh, leading a youth retreat in the Beckley area, and a fellow from Princeton named Norman Arrington, I don't know if you've ever heard of him, Norman was a one-person uh, uh, dramatist, and he would come and do one-person soliloquies of, of various characters in the Bible, and he came and did Jeremiah. And he dressed in what he thought was the proper attire for a prophet like Jeremiah. And he, he began to tell us Jeremiah's story. And I'll never forget a line that he said. Jeremiah warned the people about forfeiting their faith for other gods. And he preached and he preached and he preached to the, to the children of Israel. And as far as we know... For all of Jeremiah's preaching, for 40 years, he never had one convert. Tyler is a young person. Abby is a young person. They're headed into some type of ministry as they go forward. But let me ask the two of you. Could you imagine engaging in ministry for the next 40 years and never having one convert to show for it. And yet Jeremiah was faithful. And then I remember too in the old version of the disciple Bible study video series there was one of the professors who gives the introduction and he said these words about Jeremiah. He said Jeremiah proclaimed destruction to God's people for their Idolatry. They went away and followed other gods, giving up their one true and living God. And in so doing, they totally rejected that which mattered the most to them. But in this, in this disciple video, the fellow says, they gave up that which mattered most to them and replaced it with something of extreme and less significance. And Jeremiah said, it's as though he announced to the people that there's going to be a nuclear destruction. And then Jeremiah, against all total odds, went out and bought a piece of property at ground zero as a way of saying there is hope. Lest we get too discouraged about this period of the story that we're in, and by the way, if we had about five more chapters like the past three we've had, we'd probably be saying, oh, let's move on, let's move on. But in the final page of this chapter is the little bit of Ezekiel. You remember Ezekiel saw a wheel rolling way up in the middle of the air? And I remember my dad was uh, in the show at Hinton where the J.C.'s put on every year. And every year they used to always sing the same song, and I never knew what it meant because I was just a little boy then, but I sure know what it means now. Them bones, them bones, them dry bones, them bones, them bones, them dry bones. Show the way of the Lord. Ezekiel said, these bones will live again. Even though Israel had done such a terrible thing, and abandoning their God and laying aside that which was of tremendous value, God was still willing to bring them back to hope and a place of prominence as His people. And so, my friends, let me just say that wherever we go and whatever we do in life, whatever terrible mistakes we made, whatever awful trades we make for things of great value, exchange for things of lesser value. The God of our creation, the God of our salvation, walks beside us. And He seeks to redeem us. You know, I want Jake to come back now because I want, I, want I want to trade back. <laughs> come on. Well, are you going to bring the guitar?
I didn't tell him about this part of the story. I think about the people that I've met, Bev, over the years who've traded things that really mattered for things that didn't matter. I think how, how foolish they were. And, and yet, our God, like Jake right now, is willing to give us another chance. Thank you, Jake. Now you feel sorry for Jake. <laughs> you know, um, I just think that I just think that sometimes we forget that all of us have made bad trades. We've made poor choices. We've said things that we know we shouldn't have. How do, we, how do we get that back? Sometimes you can't. Sometimes all you can do is move forward from where you're at. But, but the key to today's lesson is, regardless of what you've traded that was of value for that which was of less value, God still cares about your future and my future and how our life turns out. And even while they dwelt in Babylon for more than 70 years, and by the way, I want to close with this this morning. Some scholars of the Bible believe this, and I want you to know that I'm beginning to see it and believe it more and more every day. Did you know that after the Babylonian captivity, after the children of Israel were carried away and the temple was destroyed and after they came back and rebuilt the temple, did you know that as far as we can tell, there was never a time in the history of Israel thereafter that they ever engaged in idolatry, forsaking their God and taking other gods. There was never an example of that again like there was before the Babylonian captivity. And some people believe that the carrying away into captivity in Babylon actually healed the children of Israel of their idolatry. Which has led some people to suggest, only suggest, that while suffering is in no way or no means originated or created by God, suffering can have healing properties in our lives. There are things that happen to human beings in this world that cause them to suffer emotionally and physically. And even though God did not ordain those events, those events can bring healing into people's lives. Think about that. Think about that in your own experiences. Think about where God has healed you through something you've gone through. Jake, I'll never make that trade again. Thank you for helping me out here today. You're a good man. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.